Support for another round comes from Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com today for a domain experience that's transparent and easy to set up. Just make sure you enter offer code another round at checkout to get 10% off. Make your next move with Squarespace. Hey everyone, Eleanor from the Pod Squad here. I just wanted to share with you some very exciting news, and that is that Another Round is having a live show in Chicago, and we want to see you there. Join us on June 21st at Thalia Hall for a live taping of the podcast. It's going to be amazing. It's part of WBEZ's Podcast Passport series. And tickets go on sale on Friday, May 5th. And for more information, go to wbez.org slash events. Hi, everyone. I'm Heaven. I'm Tracy. And you're listening to Another Round with Heaven and Tracy. Oh, and we're sultry today. <laughs> I'm not mad. It's, every time I try my NPR voice or like my oh, that was public the radio voice. voice, it wasn't that clear. I feel like you have to sound more like a yoga teacher. Why are we doing a okay, great question. public radio voice story? Because we have a public radio friend here with us. We Ooh. are in the studio because we're doing something a little bit different this week, okay? Ooh. Y'all know that we have feelings about white dudes and who gets to come into the studio. <laughs> True. Disclaimer, there's a white dude here. But At it's this cool. moment. At this very moment. His name is Kenny Malone, or as we like to call him, Kenny Malone. Hi, Kenny Malone. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> this is the best. called you that? This is the Did best you know introduction that? I've ever had. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So, Kenny is a reporter with the amazing podcast Only Human from WNYC Studios. They have these very, very deeply reported stories on science and medicine. You came to us for the science, because we yeah. bring the science. You needed the science. Right, because I can't science by myself. We science together. We, we, <laughs> we found science some science. Together. Yeah. So we've been working on this story for a year. It involves all kinds of amazing twists and turns, and mm-hmm. most, I think most significantly, Tracy's mother, Velva, who, uh, with whom yeah. I've become great Facebook friends. Tracy's not friends with her mother on Facebook. It's very mean. We talk I... about you all the time. So at any rate, you guys are going to play this story that we've been working on, and I, I'm just here to, uh, to say hi. Do you want me to NPR it out? Oh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. can you give us an NPR closer? For Only Human, I'm Kenny Malone. Oh, man. Can I do that with another round? Let me see. <coughs> For another round, <laughs> I'm Tracy Clayton. Mm. Did That's I it? get it? You got it. Yay! You're... All right. Bye, Kenny. Thank Thanks. you. Heaven, you may remember that we had a one Crystal West on our show. Yes. Crystal is um, co-host of The Read, which is like one of the biggest and most important and blackest pop culture podcasts Facts. out. And I want to start on this journey with you by playing this piece of audio. You tweeted recently about Ancestry.com. I did. <laughs> about finding out your background. <laughs> I did. I'm so excited about Talk this. To me about I that took journey. my ethnicity Tracy's also test. maybe doing this? So I have one of the Ancestry tests. I have this very irrational fear. I understand that it's an irrational fear. However, I still have it like in the core of my bosom. Okay. I'm so afraid that I'm going to get my test back in this <laughs> Tracy, it is going to tell me that I'm not black. <laughs> yeah, I have that same what fear. It, what? Ah, I was you. just very concerned because, you know, I'm black American. My parents, my grandparents, my great grandparents. And I'm just like, please don't tell me that I'm right. like 5% African. Thank please you. don't. I'll be uh, devastated. I feel so like, validated right now. in America <laughs> for so many generations had like warped right. me genetically and I don't want to have any blackness. <laughs> I was concerned about that. So when I got my email and I found out I was like 35% Nigeria was just like, I want a Nigerian flag now. Right. Like, That's what I, I was like, like I want to go my African flag. Yeah, oh, like God. I want to go now. Like, <laughs> my like, people. It just felt my good people. To, right, to say, you know, this yes. place, that uh-huh. place. So when we spoke to Crystal that day in the studio, Mm -hmm. I actually had one of the Ancestry.com tests in my possession. Ancestry.com offers a bunch of different types of DNA tests. Hmm. Um, Couldn't begin to tell you anything about all of them, (laughs) except for the one that we actually took, which is called an admixture test. Okay. Are you familiar with an admixture test? Break it down for me. Okay. I had to put a saliva sample in this little thing that they sent me. I sent it off. They sent it to a lab where they do science stuff. And they analyzed my DNA. And Mm -hmm. then they compared my DNA to the DNA of people from all around the world. Right? And the results, Mm -hmm. like when when you get your results back and they're like, oh, well, you're 75% Scottish or British or whatever. 
Those are based on people who have DNA that is most similar to mine. Okay. It's kind of like an educated guess. All right. Like, based on their samples and the databases they use, this is probably where you okay. and your folks are from. Okay. That's an admixture test. I sent it off. They did their science stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And I actually remember waiting. Like, it said that it would be, like, six weeks or something. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be an excruciating six weeks. Six weeks? weeks? Right? What they doing for six weeks? I know. And so the first week I checked every single day. <laughs> it was like, just in case they got, like, somebody was like, let me let me get some Expedite overtime this, this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I finally get my email, and I was so excited. But I was kind of nervous to to click it because I was like, okay, this is when everything could change for me. So I click it, and I open it, and I'm so excited because guess what it told me? What? 83% African. Black as <laughs> hell. Is that a good enough, like, percentage for you? I would have loved higher, honestly. Mm. I would have, like, a solid, like, 90, 90? would have yeah. been great. Um, but I was surprised it was that high because my family is very fair-skinned, like, both on my mother and father's side. You like fuck, Tracy. I was not going to go that far. <laughs> um, uh, we we have a winter color. <laughs> We just have it all year round sometimes. All year round? Just sometimes. That's called the all year round color. (laughs) (laughs) I do tan very nicely, though, I must say. Carry on. Um, But yeah, 83%. And I was really, really surprised. And the highest percentage, it said, is in Mali. So 33% from Mali. Okay. And I was like, oh my God, I found my flag. Oh, shit. And I am 16% European. So how do you feel about that? Fine. I thought it would be higher. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when, when you're arguing with your boo and you're like, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Nothing's it's wrong. Fine. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I expected some European there. I really thought it would be like 20, you're 30. Light-skinned. Because we are a fair-skinned family. <laughs> <laughs> because we have a year-long winter color. <laughs> um. But yeah, once I found out that like my flag now is Molly, I was like, okay, it's time to find out all about Molly. So I'm like doing research. Mm. I Googled like pictures of people from Molly. I'm so excited for this new Tracy. Me too. You have a whole new identity to explore. I'm about to get a an entire prom dress made out of the Malian flag. Malian? <laughs> made of You're the gonna f- learn about your people first. I'm gonna learn about <laughs> what them adjectives first. they use. And then all of my wardrobe. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> all flag everything. <laughs> So I see that I'm super black. I'm excited. I'm doing some research. And then it registers that there's 0% Native American ancestry. And I was expecting to see it. And I was expecting to see it because family lore, like probably every black family lore in America, honestly, has been, you know, we are black and white and also Indian. Got some Cherokee. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. Seriously. I heard that so much growing up and I didn't realize... It was. I didn't realize it was a meme. <laughs> yes, it was a meme before there were memes. That's exactly right. That is such a perfect way to put it. So it was surprising to me to not see any Native American anything because the one thing that I grew up knowing about my family is that we are descendant of black people, white people, and Native American people. And I was like, I'm going to have to, like, go to my mom and tell her that, like, the stories that she heard are probably maybe not true, you hmm. know? Because she always... When she would talk to me about, like, our family history, she always spoke with a lot of pride, but especially with the Native American part. Mm. I was disappointed because I was like, wow, this thing that I thought that I was, I am not. I was worried that this would leave her with more questions versus answering the questions that she already had. Mm. So the opposite of what you wanted to do. (laughs) (laughs) So I was nervous about that conversation. Mm. So before I had this conversation with my mother, I wanted to get a second opinion. And so that's... Classic Tracy. Classic me. If I had the money, I would have had a seventh and eighth opinion too. (laughs) Uh, But we decided to get a test from 23andMe, Mm -hmm. which is another DNA genealogy type company. Mm -hmm. So took one test, got the results back, Mm -hmm. took a second test, and at this point, I was still waiting for the results, right? Mm -hmm. And so in the interim, I called my mother to just sort of like chit-chat with her about it and update her on the situation, but I was not calling to give her the results because I didn't want to do it over the phone Mm -hmm. because I wanted to record it so that we could have it for the show. And also, I just wanted to... Like, it's it's a... It's kind of a... It's an intimate conversation, you know? It's about, like, family and family history, and I didn't want to do that over the phone. Like, I wanted to be able to do it in person so I could, like, read her body language and... Word. That's fair. Yeah. So I called her, and she happened to have been babysitting my great-nephew, Jaden. Oh, Jaden! At the time. So uh, he's very loud. So you hear him in the conversation, too. Oh, my God. 
Don't bite them. Oh. Don't. Don't bite them. He's chewing on my thumb. Don't do that. It hurts. Did I tell you that I took a second DNA test? Nope. You won't tell me anything about the DNA test. <laughs> well, I took a second test. Was the first one inconclusive, Miss Sam? No, it wasn't inconclusive, but I mean, you just. just You're not my just, child. Is that what it's saying? You I wish. I wish is what it said. <laughs> are we uh, uh, royalty, and are we going to inherit some money? Or? I don't want to spoil it to you, but we there's no money coming our way that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the results are going to say? I still can't tell I you what, have, what they are. I have no idea. Like I said, I only know what I've been told. Mm-hmm. That there was occasion in uh, the Indian in our blood. So that's all she knows is that we're black, white, and American Indian. Like she's mm-hmm. that's like a baseline fact to her. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to point that out. If you had to guess where in Africa we're probably from, what would you think? I, so, I have no idea, honey. Okay, I mean, that's fair. Most of the that's a fair came answer. From the coast. So we could be South African. We could be Zulu. Would you like to be Zulu? Huh? Oh, Watusi. <laughs> He's shaking. He wants to be a Watusi. Jane wants to be Watusi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, tell Jade and we'll see. All right, let me get this electrical cord out of this baby's hand. Please get the electrical cord out the baby's hand. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, All right, bye-bye. You can't play with that, child. No, 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 no. Jaden, honey, you can't play with the electrical outlet. Oh, I love your family. Y'all so cute. I'm happy to report that uh, he's probably still trying to play with electrical outlets. <laughs> um, did you know that she very quickly listed American Indian as like one of the things that she had been told that mm-hmm. we were? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it it's a very big and critical part of our family history and like who we are and also who she is mm. you know like it shaped like her identity growing up so when I found out that there was no um, native ancestry there I got really nervous to talk to her about it this is why I was nervous mm. and uh, the whole journey completely changed So, it turns out that this, like, story, this occurrence is, it's common and it's becoming more common because more and more black people are turning to these tests Mm. to figure out where they come from. And since there are so many black folks who think they have, quote unquote, Indian in their family, they're taking these tests and they're Mm. getting them back and they're just like, wait a Mm. minute. Um, I actually tweeted about this and I got a lot of responses from a lot of people. Then the questions that we were asking became, like, why is this phenomenon happening? You know, how can we get context to figure out what's going on? So we were in Ann Arbor, Michigan for a show. And there is an amazing professor there. Her name is Taya Miles. She's a professor of, like, 27 different things. So we can't even, like, list everything. Shout out to her. Um, But she writes a lot about African-American and Native American history. Mm. Um, she is black. She is married to a Native man. And she said that she has the same sort of oral history in her own family of of having, quote unquote, Indian in the family. Um, so I sat down and I talked to her about why this is so commonplace in black families. America has been a really tough place for black people, as you know, as we know. And uh, Native American cultures and places have stood out in the black imagination as uh, spaces of refuge. So you oftentimes hear stories about the idea that um, enslaved people who were running away could go to Native communities and be taken in. That did happen in some cases, uh, but there were many other kinds of relations that unfolded around that. So I think that it really serves the purpose of um, representing a space of freedom, representing a space of dignity and respect on this land where uh, Black people have gotten so little of it. And I do want to tell you that there are connections that we cannot pin down through these scientific studies. And they're really important kinds of connections. They're kin connections that have to do with the bonds of adoption. And so just because your DNA results came back 
uh, telling you something doesn't mean that your grandmother's story did not have some kind of truth to it. I was really surprised by my disappointment. I think that there is a desire, at least in me, once I was um, radicalized, sort of, you know, like I've never been able to explain like my skin tone and my hair texture any other way. And I mean, like logic growing up would have told me that, well, somewhere on the plantation that, you know, I came from, there was rape going on. And it feels better and it's more soothing to think that we're products of like, you know, this beautiful union between two separate brown peoples. And that's why, you know. But you know what? I hate to say this. Even in the case of people coming together who are black and native in the past, there is a fair amount of sexual exploitation, sexual assault and rape that has been documented through the historical record. In the context of Native American slave holding in the South, some of these dynamics that we're familiar with in the white South did develop so that Native slave holding men had access to black women and um, they sometimes used that access to abuse those women. And this is another area that we as black people have a really hard time facing that once we finally see uh, those brown people coming together, to acknowledge, to, to have to confront the fact that it wasn't always consensual, mm. that's rough. I had a moment like this when I was in some college class about the one I could find about Native American history. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that realization that, that like the relationship wasn't this like romanticized yeah. uh, kumbaya brown town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First of all, Kumbaya Brown Town <laughs> would be a great band name. Uh, that'd be a great musical. Be Do a great you want to come to Kumbaya Brown Town? <laughs> Kumbaya Brown Town. I love this musical. Um, it doesn't exist. It's oh. a fictional place. <laughs> but yeah, that, that there's real violence there. Yeah. And that these uh, relationships weren't as, as chummy as we imagined them. Mm-hmm. I think for my part, like, it makes sense that, like, once— this new powerful group of people comes and, you know, they establish, like, power and dominance. Of course, everybody else wants some power, too. And to do that, you know, you begin to assimilate, you begin to adopt the the values of the oppressor, basically. So it makes perfect sense that, Whiteness you know. Whiteness is a hell of a drug. It is. It is. It just gets in the water. I believe and that is the expression. <laughs> water is no longer clean. Whew. Um, one of the things that Professor Miles said that really stuck with me, though, is the thing about wanting these these community relationships to have meaning even if they're not necessarily biological. Mm -hmm. And my friend was just saying the other day that, like, it sucks that the KKK has a monopoly on the word clan. (laughs) Oh, my god, It's a good word. It's a great word. And, like, we need, like, a a wider breadth of, like, words for things that are, like, family but not family. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Play cousin, I believe, is what we call it. Play cousin, as the children say. (laughs) (laughs) We need more words like play cousin. Yeah to describe family structures and meaningful relationships with communities Mm -hmm. that includes, you know, things that are outside of DNA. Yeah, for sure. I really enjoyed having this conversation, but I was also like, how cool would it be if I could talk to an actual Native American person about this phenomenon? They do exist. They do exist, for (laughs) one. But I was also like, do they know how often, like, do they know that there is a meme of black people having, quote-unquote, Indian in their family, you know? (laughs) So um, we reached out to Kim Talbert. Kim Talbert is a professor at the University of Alberta, and she writes about indigenous cultures and DNA testing, and she's a a race scholar. She is Dakota, and she is a member of the Sisseton Wapiton Oyate tribe. And she echoes something that Taya also said, and it was something similar to what you were saying, like DNA test should not be the final word on Mm. any like family line, on your identity, on your clan, on your tribe, Mm. or your play cousins. I don't think a DNA test makes you who you are. I think it's I think it's fine to be curious. I get that, but I worry about the cultural power that that uh, DNA informed identity has in the United States. I'm also very much a social constructionist, and I don't just identify as Dakota because I have ancestry. I was raised mm. by Dakota people in Dakota homelands. 
it's the living family and the the culture and the landscape that help constitute me as a human being. And I guess what I always say to people, and this might not sound sympathetic enough given where I come from, but we are constituted as who we are by the by the communities and peoples and landscapes out of which we come. And I think those provide rich stories. I I caution against always focusing on some essential past. But again, I also know that because my social construction matches my ancestral past, it's probably easy for me to say that. Mm. Um, and one of the things I wish that that people who are not Indigenous would take from Indigenous people and I'm and is an understanding that one, I think, needs to value one's relationships with the current non-humans and landscapes in, in which one lives. And so... That doesn't necessarily mean owning and controlling land, but I really think we need to stop being so human-centric and always focusing on our human ancestry and wherever that comes from. But we need to think about, are we living in good relation with this place and not only with each other, but with the non-humans and the land and the water in this place? Um, if I had had a dollar to put in the collection plate at that moment... <laughs> Yo, listen! That's what I would have done. Like, do praise answer. Yeah, I mean, it's so right. Like, if you want to take something from us, if you want to appropriate something, appropriate some respect for the land that you're currently mm. ruining. Mm. I was like, Try that on for size. How about that? Um, and I asked her if she knew about the the meme, about, like, not only just, like, black people, but, like, white people, too. One of the questions that I wanted to ask you is whether or not it feels different when white people claim Native ancestry versus when people of color do it. You know, I study race. I have a well-developed language for talking about uh, the role of white supremacy and why white people do that. Um, it's, it is a harder conversation to have when, when black people do it. Um, it has helped me that I have a niece and nephew who are also black identified and I mean, it's really interesting, actually. Um, I'll just share a little story. Then this colors the way that I, I tend to respond. I lived in Southeast Asia back in the late 90s, and it was my first time living for an extended time outside the United States, and I realized how American I am. And I came back after nine months, and I flew into San Francisco, and I'd never been there. And there were two young black men walking towards me in the airport. <clears throat> and uh, I almost started crying. Mm. And I was like, what the heck, you know? And and I, I would not have had that emotional response, excuse me, <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm, no, thinking about okay. my, I'm thinking about my nephew and I'm so close to him, had I not had a nephew, yeah. my nephew Mark. Um, and I realized that I felt this way because I saw the way that my nephew moves and looks in those mm. young men. And I was like, oh, it's because they look like my family. Mm. And before he was born in 1990, I would have been incapable of seeing a young black man as, as kin in the same kind of visceral, emotional way. And so that has really shaped uh, my ability to emotionally engage in a way that I'm still critical of the dynamics of race that are happening when I feel that Black people do try to appropriate Native things, but because I have this kinship relationship with uh, the Black children and Black Dakota children in my family now are young people, it's really kind of complicated my response. Man. Oh, no. When she got choked up, I got choked up. Yo, mm -hmm. same. Just okay, now. Right? Um, That's so real. So some time passes, um, and I get an email saying that my 23andMe test results are ready. Ooh. Ooh. Um, but I wanted to open them with um, an expert of some form <laughs> because, I mean, like, I can look at all these percentages and read all these fancy words. I don't know what they mean. <laughs> but um, A lot of context. Yeah, I wanted some context, if you will. So I went to go speak with Alondra Nelson, who was a dean at Columbia University. She writes a lot about race and DNA. And we went to Columbia University and we talked in this room that was just like very like academic and stately. You know, like <laughs> there was like this Columbia. huge, yeah, there was this huge <laughs> heavy oak table and these big portraits of like dead white dudes. Mm -hmm. It was not lost on me that I was about to figure out or do some more finding out on how black I am in this really, really white space. Mm. What should I keep in mind as I look at these results? Um, you know, the impression that we get from the genetic genealogy television shows is that, you know, 
people say, Tracy, you are Ebo. And you're mm -hmm. just like, oh, Lord, I'm not from Flatbush. You know, like, <laughs> I, like I'm Ebo. I got to just reset my whole clock. Uh -huh. Like, it's time for a rewind, a reboot. But what happens is that, you know, you add that to that big pot of stuff mm -hmm. that's you. You know, I would advise that people not take genetic ancestry testing as the sort of end all and be all of who they are and as something that trumps any other things your family might have told you about who hmm. your people are. Um, I think that so much of what genetic knowledge is are constructions that come out of how we've come to think about history and about families in the social world. So when geneticists and computer scientists are making algorithms, they're making assumptions mm -hmm. um, about what is African genetically, what is Asian genetically, what is European genetically. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of kind of social and historical knowledge that goes into creating the science of genetic genealogy. So we open the email with the results. Drum roll. Ancestry composition. I am 80.8% Sub-Saharan African, 18.2% um, European, 0.2% East Asian and Native American, less than 0.1% Middle Eastern and North African. So I took this as proof that there is absolutely, positively no Native heritage in my family at all, in spite of everything that I'd always been told. And it was time to tell my mother, and I was not excited. And we're going to talk about that, but first, we're going to take a quick break. Support for Another Round comes from Squarespace. With Squarespace, you get a unique domain experience that's simple to set up and an all-in-one platform to help you create a beautiful website. Which brings me to a game of Would You Rather Internet Edition. And this time we have welcomed Tyler Sorensen from BuzzFeed's creative department once again into the studio to ask me some questions related to the interwebs. Hi, Tyler. Hey, Tracy. What you got? Would you rather have the You Got Mail message play from your phone at full volume whenever you received a work email uh. or replace your smartphone with a beeper oh you got mail for sure what am i gonna do with a beeper i first of all i'd be the only person on earth with the beeper i couldn't <laughs> i couldn't communicate with anybody else um i actually used to own a beeper believe it or not it was really awkward because i had it at a time where i had no friends so nobody ever beeped me so who, <laughs> this is getting depressing. <laughs> Get your unique domain today at squarespace.com. If you sign up for a year, the domain is completely free, and you can also save 10% off your first purchase with the offer code Another Round, as in the title of the wonderful show that you are listening to right now. Make your... <laughs> Make your next move with Squarespace. I wanted even more context before I took this to my mother because I wanted to have as much knowledge and fact as possible. So I Skyped with a scientist from oh, 23andMe. Her name is Kasha Britz. We're talking, and she's explaining science stuff, and I'm kind of understanding. Okay. I, was, I was an English major on purpose. But she said something that's that was a little surprising. Ooh. If you remember, my results were 0.1% Native ancestry, which is basically nothing. So I had Statistically insignificant. Statistically, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I had just accepted that, like, oh, okay, the chances of us actually having had a Native ancestor, slim to none. But she started playing with this algorithm, right? Okay. And uh, it's not nothing. It's really reinforcing my thought that this is probably – uh, signal of real Native American DNA. Interesting. I'm smiling right now. <laughs> <laughs> but what is she saying? So she... I, what is she suggesting? I could not repeat for you all okay. of the scientific <laughs> stuff, but basically she thinks that there was probably a Native ancestor somewhere, but it would have been like 12 generations back. Okay. Which means 
that the family story is still not what we had always been told that it was, but it still gave me something. And I was happy to hear that, but it I was also weirded out by my happiness. Lots of feelings. I don't know. Um, I feel, I feel giddy. I feel excited. But if I feel excited because I now feel like some sort of like special kind of black because of this potential ancestor, that's not okay. There's a discomfort in really wanting to be something else in addition to black. Because me is like a, you know, a progressive, like strong, you know, there's nothing wrong with being black, you know, quote unquote, just black is fine. You know, like, does this mean that, like, I'm not um, as proud and happy with my just blackness as I want to be or have been pretending to be? And I want to make sure that that's not where my excitement is coming from. I don't think it is, but I'm very paranoid (laughs) about it. Emotional roller coaster. <laughs> Remember that song? <laughs> That's an actual song. I don't know if we. I don't. I don't know. Um, it, this is a bit of an emotional roller coaster. It is. Like I just wanted my flag, and now I'm having an existential crisis. <laughs> um, so at this point in the journey, I'm prepping to go to Louisville, and the identity question has become like an even like bigger thing. Not only is the family legend almost certainly not true, at least in the way that everybody thought or assumed. But now I'm thinking about my own feelings and I'm like, why did I want it to be true in the first place? Am I trying to be like a a special snowflake Mm -hmm. in the world of blackness? Like, do I, am I secretly clamoring for like some exoticism Mm -hmm. there? Which I never, I never thought I did, but I'm just like, what if I am and I don't know it? I mean, anti-blackness is also a hell of a drug. It is, and it just seeps in there. You don't even know. I know. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. Welcome to being a a post-colonial subject. (laughs) It's a whole new batch of existential crises. Uh, It sure is. So I I was taking all of these crises to my mom to talk about our lineage, and I was nervous. Mm. My producer and I hop a plane. We go to Louisville. My mother still lives in the house that I lived. I wasn't born in it, but I moved into that house when I was two. Mm -hmm. So she's been there for a really, really long time. It's this white house in the black part of town in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, And we heard from Jaden earlier. He was trying to play with electrical cords (laughs) and sockets. And she was babysitting him, so he was there too. I'm going to put the dog out. Oh, my goodness. But we eventually settled around my kitchen table. So it was me, my mom, mm-hmm. producer Kenny, nephew, Jaden. Um, What's the dog's name? The dog's name is Fendi. Fendi is no longer with us. Oh. She's not dead. We just had to give her away. Oh. I should have started off with she's yeah, not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fendi's an emotional good. Roller coaster. She's living a good, happy life. Upstate. Upstate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Shout out to Fendi. Shout Wherever to you Fendi. are. <laughs> Um, so we're sitting there at the table getting ready to get into this conversation and listen to one of the first things that she says. All righty. American Indian. It's interesting that that was the first thing you said, American Indian. Why is that interesting? Why was that? I've always told you there was American Indian in us. It was the first thing that she brought up. Like, we were about to get into the results, and she was just like, oh, we're American Indian. Just, like, fat. So, knowing what I had to tell her and knowing that that was the first thing on her mind, I was like, ugh, I was a little nervous. But I'll pull up the rest of the test results. Are you ready to hear? Yes. Okay. So, this is the ethnicity estimate for me specifically. I am 83% African. You're kidding. I'm not. Are you surprised? Yes. Why? You're so fair skinned. Okay, fair. Uh, but yeah, no, it makes sense. I was surprised too to find out. And my biggest fear in the beginning was that it was going to tell me I'm not African at all. Really? Mm-hmm. Even though it's silly and unfounded, but uh-huh. I'm super black is what I learned. Wow. I know, right? 
Um, so this test says that we also have 0% Native American ancestry. Wow. We talked to your mama. She was very certain. Mm. But I, I read somewhere where a lot of people, black mm -hmm. people in particular, are getting these DNA tests and it's coming back that they're not Native American. Mm. <laughs> a lot of people. And they get mad. So, I mean, I feel like this raises an interesting question of, like, the phenomenon of why is this happening? Here's what I think. Okay. My mother told me this story. You have to understand where they grew up, how they grew up. Some of those people down there don't know who their own fathers or mothers are. I mean, you know, somebody dies, somebody takes them in, somebody else raises them. They become Taylors, they become Williamses, mm -hmm. and they're really not either. Now, when Mama was telling me about the Native American, when I was a kid like you, it, it did excite me because, mm -hmm. you know, I've always been interested in history, black American history, Native American history. Mm -hmm. And it excited me to think that I was part of that group. I thought you were going to be disappointed. Not really. I mean, I don't want to disappoint you by not being you know, displaying a bunch of emotions. No, 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 that, doesn't, that but, doesn't disappoint me. Okay. It confused me, but it doesn't disappoint me. Oh. Well, there's nothing wrong with me. I didn't say there was anything <laughs> wrong with you, my God. <laughs> You're just fine. Uh. She didn't even care. <laughs> I love your mom so much. <laughs> but I'm, like, fretting and, like, pulling my hair out and, like, trying to figure out, like what how to comfort her mm. and she was like oh okay that's fine <laughs> but i think that when it comes to um black identity in america like this melting pot you know like people just assume that if you're not dark skin then you have had some like race mixing or you know forced or otherwise mm. in the family so told her about the 23 Me results as well and the potential native ancestor some 12 generations back and that didn't really change anything for her so um, I shifted the conversation back to Africa and to Mali and to my flag. Do you think you might want to go to Mali someday? Or to West Africa? I want to go to a dude ranch. Oh my God. Uh, you just found out that you are you. West African and you want to go to a dude ranch. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> You're the most ridiculous person she I've ever known. She never has wanted to go to a dude There's nothing you out there, but rocks and cactuses and I've never seen them you've seen pictures it's exactly what it looks like <laughs> what's a dude ranch uh just this is like a special a, type of ranch for dudes just like <laughs> I'm sorry no that sounds like a terrible place <laughs> I know it sounds terrible why is she trying to go there it's just like a ranch in the desert with like we have deserts in Africa <laughs> Was it worth it? How are you feeling, Trace? Um, I do feel like it was worth it. Yeah? Because um, it really helped me to, like, knowing that the thing that just happened with me and my mom and my family happens with Black people all over the place sort of mm. makes me feel, uh, you know, it's, it's a good, it's a feeling to know that you're not, like, not alone. And, like, this is part of, like... Kumbaya Brown Town, if you will. It's Kumbaya <laughs> Brown Town. Exactly. Um, and... I also got to answer some questions, even if the answers that I got weren't the ones that I expected or wanted about, mm -hmm. like, my family history. You know, is there any Native ancestry? Yes or no? And the answer is maybe. And first I was like, that's not, I still don't know. But the conversations that I had with Taya Miles and Alondra Nelson um, and Kim Tallbear, they really helped me to reshape the idea of, like, kinship and what it means to, like, be family. Mm -hmm. And um, also talking to my mother about, like, how, you know, like, down south, you know, when somebody dies, somebody else takes somebody else in. It doesn't make you not family. It doesn't mm. make you blood, but it doesn't make you any less family or any less related. So I feel like I have, like, a good sense of I found comfort in finally knowing what I don't know. Does that make any sense? It does. But uh, I am pleased as punch, I would say. Okay. To finally be able to go get a flag. I Ooh. feel like did you I've, get one? I haven't got one yet, but I'm going to. 
What's uh, um, what are the dimensions? What are we talking? <laughs> I'm talking about like <laughs> tapestry size. Like I might just like find some Molly wallpaper. But oh uh, <laughs> the the joy and like the elation that comes with like finally knowing where in Africa I'm from mm. definitely outweighs any disappointment that I had over not having like this Native American ancestry that I had always thought that I had. Mm. I'm ready to give me a flag. All right, I'm let's ready. turn it up. So before we wrap up, I wanted to thank Kenny Malone, a.k.a. Kenny Malone, <laughs> and the only human team. Kenny, it has been a delight spending the past year with you and your oh team. God, you're so welcome. This is, this is like the greatest thing that I've ever gotten to do. Come back anytime. Thanks okay. for doing all the reporting and stuff. Yeah, no, for, please. It was a, we did it together. Thanks for helping me learn how to science. You're so you're so welcome. Learning how to science. Ba ba da ba. Kenny Malone. <laughs> And that's all I got. That was the whole song. That Sorry. was great. It was, you know when to end the song. I'll tell you that much. Kitty Malone, it was a pleasure. And thanks to you again and our friends at Only Human. You can hear more great stories just like this one by subscribing to Only Human wherever you get your podcasts. They just did a really hilarious story about an office outbreak. It's called Flu Done It. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. You know I love a pun, and this was a great episode. And they found the perpetrator. Mm-hmm. Or did they? No, no. Maybe you need to check it out and listen and see. This episode was produced by Nina Patak and Julia Ferlin with editorial oversight from Eleanor Kagan and Meg Kramer. Music from our lovely in-house musicians, Miss Jean Grey. You can follow her on Twitter at Jean Greasy. And Don Will of the almighty Tanya Morgan. You can follow him at Don Will will on twitter follow heaven at heaven rants on twitter heaven like the place in the sky and rants like the the things that folks be doing me yep she does <laughs> follow me on twitter at broken mcpoverty um and you know what maybe send me a dollar so i mm. can change my twitter name find us on the emails the twitters the facebooks at another round another round at buzzfeed yes on all the things rate us on itunes uh five stars if you please um, another round merch you can get you a tote bag you can get you a t-shirt you can get you a tote bag and a t-shirt if you what? feel fancy what you can do that at shop.buzzbeat.com drink some water take your meds call your person oh my take God. a nap <laughs> I really haven't taken my meds this morning oh pumpkin. I haven't slept at all I, oh. I feel like a crazy person well we need to get out of here it's time for me to go okay bye heaven see you at the dough <laughs> <laughs> bye everybody Did you see RuPaul's Drag Race last night? Of course I did. It blew my mind. It's all I ever talk about, and I can't find anybody to talk about it with, so I am so thankful that you're here. I mean, you have become my RuPaul's Drag Race soulmate, and I am thrilled that we have a new podcast at BuzzFeed called The Library, where this is all we talk about. Here, it truly is RuPaul's best friend race. (laughs) I could not agree with you more. So join us every Saturday as we recap the latest episode of Season 9 and gag over TV's best reality show. Tune in wherever you find your podcasts.